Hi guys! We are going to learn about another king today. But first, let's go ahead and do our verse. Um, let's say it once through, and then we're going to say it real quiet to real loud, okay? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. So let's say it really quiet. Ready? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Now say it a little bit louder, and then a little bit louder, and then a little bit louder, and then yell it, okay? So go ahead and do that. You can pause it so you have it on your screen. All right. Okay, so Saul was the first king of God's people, but he died in a battle. And Israel needed a new king. God had already made his choice. And he made it actually when this guy was young. When he was home tending his father's sheep. He was still a boy. All right. Um, but he had to go through a lot before he actually ended up being king. And as a matter of fact, he knew King Saul, and he was best friends with his son, Jonathan. So um, this story is in 2 Samuel 5, 1 to 2. So let's see where, where that's at in the Bible. Ready? In the Old Testament, remember, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel is the 10th book in the Old Testament. Okay? All right. Well, let's see what happens. Okay? It says, All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In other words, we're relatives. Um, in the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. Remember, he killed Goliath and everything, too. And the Lord said to you, you will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. They remembered that David would be the next king after Saul, that God had actually said that. He had told Samuel um, and um, Samuel had anointed David when he was just a boy. And um, But King Saul was still king, and David knew that God had had Samuel anoint him too. So he waited until his time. So what kind of a job um, would you like God to ask you to do? God had asked David to do that. What kind of a job would you like God to ask you to do? Hmm. Talk about it. Think about it. Come back. And what do you think would make you good at that job? Okay, talk about that a little bit. David needed a city to rule from. So he took his men to Jerusalem to take over Jerusalem. But the people living there made fun of David. So listen to what this says, okay? It's in verse 6, so i got to change the page. Okay. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites. That's who lived there at the time. The Jebusites said to David, You will not get in here. Even the blind and the lame can ward you off. They thought, David can't get in here. They had a big wall, okay? And it was really hard, probably really thick. They said, we're not worried about it. You're not going to get in here. Okay. They said he'd never be able to get in. 
Let's see what that might have been like. What I want you to do is I want you to make a fort at your house. Make it as secure as you can, okay? And then have somebody else try to get in, all right? Go ahead and do that and come back. Okay, now the Bible tells us that David and his men were able to get into the city in a clever way. Let's see what it was, okay? Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. It was named after him. Jerusalem was always called the city of David after that, okay? On that day, David had said, anyone who conquers the Jebusites will have to use the water shaft to reach those lame and blind who are David's enemies. Ooh, so God gave him an idea, didn't he? Okay, what they did was they shut the water off. All right, um, there usually cities were built around places that had water, like a river or something like that, to supply water for the city. And they would usually dig a trench and pipes, things like that, to go through, through the wall, okay, it would like go under the wall and into the city. And they usually made it really so where you really couldn't just walk in and probably was pretty deep, okay? And you couldn't just get through there with a boat or anything like that. You would have to somehow turn the water off. Well, that's what David and his men did, okay? They cut the water off and then they were able to walk into that area, into the riverbed, and get under the wall and in and conquer the Jebusites. So that was a pretty clever way, wasn't it? You think God gave him that idea? I think so. <laughs> okay, so it was sort of like a tunnel. Okay, so what I want you to do now is make a tunnel into your fort, okay? Make a, a tunnel in to get into the fort and see if you can do that. Okay, now I want you to think about a time that you found a creative way to do something. Yeah, I'm having to do a lot of that right now at school, you know, with COVID and having masks on and us not being able to be close together. We're having to, at school, we're having to be come up with a lot of creative ideas to, to be able to do things. And so like, for instance, this month I came up with a bingo sheet that the kids read different books and I can give them prizes and that encourages them to read. That's something, that's, that's kind of something we've kind of done before, but maybe not in the same way. So we had to tweak it a little bit, okay? And um, I'm also having to do some other things to let them know what books we have. Um, I'm producing a newsletter right now and I'm, I've got a YouTube channel where kids can, um, listen to what the books are about and things like that. So that's really cool. Anyway, so what's the coolest way you've ever seen God's plan at work in your life? Okay. That's an interesting one too, isn't it? I've seen God work through me in ways I never would have thought. Um, and it's something to remember that I have people come up to me that I didn't even know were watching and they would say things like, you know, I really appreciate the way you're so loving toward people and that you're living like Christ. And that is so encouraging to me, but I had no idea they were even watching. No idea. And so that's something to remember, too. That's pretty awesome responsibility to have. Um, but it was also encouraging to me. Um, it, it made me thankful that God was using me in that way. So David took over the city. He called it the city of David. And another man, another king named Hiram came and built David a palace. Okay, they just... 
decided to come and help build a palace. Hmm, I wonder who gave him that idea. Okay. And God was with David all the time because God loved him and had a plan for him. And just like David, God has a plan for us too, right? That's right. Okay. Now, I want you to do another thing. And that is, I want you to make a sign. Sometimes when God shows us his plan, he gives us a sign. Not like a stop sign like we're going to make, okay? <laughs> but sometimes he does give us a sign. Um, David found out that he'd be king a long time before, right? We said Samuel came and anointed him, okay? And there were a bunch of other kinds of signs that God gave David. And God made gave him situations in his life where he had to depend on God for his very life. Okay? And that was the way he prepared David to be king. Okay? Once it happened, though, David was given a really great sign that God still wanted him to be king. Listen, okay? Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent envoys, that's messengers, okay, um, to David, along with cedar logs, lumber, um, and carpenters, people to build things, and stonemasons, that's the people who do the cement work, and they built a temp or a palace for David. Then David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and had exalted his kingdom, had built it up for the sake of his people Israel. He was also smart enough and knew the Lord well enough to know that he wasn't just giving him this palace and this city for him so that he could go off and enjoy being a king and being in a palace, okay? No. He gave it to him to rule the people, for the people. So the people would see him and would have a godly king and would have a place that they could come to that would be the capital city of Israel where they could come and um, know God was there with their king and had a godly leader over them. And that's an awesome responsibility, isn't it? Always got to remember, when God gives you things, it's a big responsibility. It says in another verse, and I can't think of where it's at right now, that to whom much is given, much will be required. He gives it to you for a reason, doesn't he? He doesn't just give it to you so you can sit back and enjoy Although he does like to give us things, just like your parents do, okay? Um, and maybe there are some things, little things, that are like that. Um, and there were many privileges that David did have as king, okay? But he doesn't want us to just get comfortable in that. He wants us to use the talents and things that he gives us. So right now I want you to get a piece of paper. Um, it can just be a plain piece of paper or it can be... A colored piece of construction paper like we made our um, crowns out of. You can get some construction paper or a colored paper like that. And um, just draw or cut out a sign. It can be in the shape like a stop sign. It can just be a triangle like a yield sign. Or you can just even leave it as a um, rectangle. That's fine. That's totally fine. Um, whatever you want to do. But we're going to make some silly signs. We're not going to make some serious signs. We're going to do ones like, beware, flying pigs. Okay? Or tree crossing. <laughs> um, road clothes except to jetpackers. Um, or slow. There's a bungee jumping platypus. <laughs> Maybe you can think of one that might be a little appropriate for your house, okay? Maybe you've got some nicknames for some people around your house and you need to make a beware of the nut or um, <laughs> something like that. Or maybe in my case, it might be slow, Ernie's Crossing, okay? My nickname is Ernie. Okay, 
So go ahead and do that and then come back. We'll talk about it a little bit. Okay. Why are signs important? They kind of warn us of things, right? Tell us something's coming. Okay. Let us get prepared, right? What are some signs that have helped you know you're following God's plan? Hmm. That's very interesting, isn't it? Um, think about that a little bit. Um, if things just really aren't working out and you pray out, pray about them and it's still really not working out, maybe you're not supposed to do that, right? Yeah. Um, and maybe if you're praying about it and the Lord is giving you some signs that he wants you to do that and it is working out well and um, you can see where the Lord has given you some talents or gifts and has been working on um, that with you and it's something that benefits other people and would be the love of Christ to them. Yeah, I think... Um, that's probably what God wants you to do, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but again, remember I said, got to pray about it, right? You can't just assume. Okay. Um, okay, so God had confirmed that David was the right king. So he sent King Hiram to help build a palace. This was all the sign David needed to know that God's plan was happening. Kings don't usually be, build palaces for other kings, do they? Not usually. I don't think I know of any other one that did. Uh, maybe it happened, but I just, I don't remember in history anybody ever doing that before. Um, God can send you signs too. God has a plan for you. So, on that note, um, Remember, David was just a shepherd before, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a shepherd that became a king. So can God do anything? Yeah. He can use just little old us um, because it's not in his power we're supposed to be doing it, or our power that we're supposed to be doing it. It's in his power that we're supposed to be doing it. God hold, told him that you're going to shepherd my people. So see how he cha changed that around? Before he was shepherding sheep. And he compared the people to sheep and said, you're going to shepherd my people now. Okay, just like in the Bible, Jesus went and got some fishermen and made them fishers of men instead of fishers of fish. Yeah. So um, it was part of the, the, the shepherding was part of the experience that God was going to show him. Okay, I helped you shepherd sheep before. Remember, David killed a lion and a bear shepherding the sheep and he says I'm going to help you shepherd the people too it's like I helped you with the bear and the lion and Goliath right yeah that was before he became king too um so what I want you to do is think about one word that describes a talent or a skill something that you can do and maybe your family can do this too each of you come up with one word that describes something that you can do um, or something that you hope God will use in the future, okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to write it on a card. You can write it, you know, on, on a piece of paper or a card, um, something, and just write it big, just that one word on that card. And then go ahead and hang that on your bedroom door or on your fridge, somewhere you can see it and pray about it every day that God would help you to use the talent or the skill that he gave you to use it for him. All right. All right. That's awesome. Hope to see you soon. Um, and uh, we had, actually we had 12 kids in Sunday school um, this last week. So it was really awesome to see a bunch of you, hope to see more of you, and I hope you have a great week um, thinking about God's plan for you. Bye-bye.